Hello, Teenage America. My name is the Rabble Rouser, and we're back with more Leeches of Larry 2. When we last left off, we, um, I ended up talking quite a bit while sitting down in this chase lounge to the point where it got night out. And what happened was that as soon as I got back to my cabin, I felt deathly tired. I fell asleep in my bed, and Bachelorette Bar Barbara, her mother, came into my room and attempted to rape me. Ah, fucking... I hate this set of letters. But what happened was, apparently, she is so comically large that she crushed me. You know, it's funny how far... Opinions have turned since this game came out. Because... Back in those days, the popularity of young, beautiful women was, or of being attracted to young, beautiful women, was like the only thing that was done on, you know, media. No, screw it. Yeah, we're just going to speed this up. <coughs> but yeah, back in those days, young women seemed to be... Young, fit women, it seems, were the most uh, attracted, more attractive in pop culture. And nowadays... Older women, heavier women, all have their people that are into that. I mean, look at uh, married with children. Yes, finally. <sighs> and look at their portrayal of women. And, yeah, nowadays, anyways. I, I'm talking way too much. The ship's revolving nightclub has a television set behind the bar and only one empty stool. There's a complimentary bowl of spinach dip at the left end of the bar. Take the dip. Grab a loaf of French bread filled with spinach, mayonnaise, and spices. Mmm. Good. Because, <coughs> you know, taking spinach dip isn't weird. And, of course, this place has a barbershop. Get out of my way. It. Is there anything you can do for this hairline of mine, you asked the barber? But of course, mister, says the barber. I'm exactly what you need. Just have a seat in the chair, please. And he takes off the mop head. Yes, I have exactly what you need. He tells you it's all the rage. The latest thing you see it everywhere these days. Fat guys make a lot of money with one of these. I call it the Jimmy model. I'm sure you'll like it just fine. He places the Jimmy carefully on your head. Cause yeah, nothing like a uh, used mop put on your head is, yeah. 
Impeccable fit, he cries. And, for you, the price is right. Only $10,000, but I like to consider it more of an investment than an expense. 10 k for a wig? Oh, what the hell, it's not like it's your money. Why let those suckers who paid for all those lucko bucko tickets treat you to a new look? I'll take it, you tell them, and peel off a hundred hundreds from your rapidly depleting wad. Barbara bids you farewell with a sweet, have a nice day. Get to look at yourself in the mirror and slip the wig into your inner jacket pocket. You tell the barber, thanks a lot, but I think I'll just say this until my cable channel application is approved. Okay, um, let's see. Can we get up here? Yes. Now, this is yet another time where we want to consider saving. <clears throat> Look, you have a distinct feeling that you should not be messing around the bridge of a large open ocean going vessel. So far, the captain hasn't known you. Better keep it that way. Well, we're going to be stupid and pull the blue lever. Silently, cautiously, as to not attract Captain's attention, you move the large toggle switch to the start position. A faint ticking sound begins. Oh fuck, stairs. My enemy. And down the stairs we go. And oh, first try. Let's see. Look, the ship has come to a stand on the water. Must be preparing for the lifeboat drill. Better not leave this area. Now let's see. Okay. Now we're going to jump. Let's get on the lifeboat. See you so. <coughs> it's a drill, I guess. Lipo drill has brought the ship to a standstill. What have we done, Larry? A siren wails a warning cry. The lifeboat begins to shake. Made it to the lifeboat in the nick of time. I am now a Cretan. Put on a wig. Good idea. This would be a perfect time. Throw away dip. A good idea. I'm still a hoser, though. Don't you know? Toss a spinach dip as far over, over the ocean as you can, which is not really that far. Slowly, you drift away from the cruise ship. You wonder if, what you forgot to pack. Believe me, when you see that message the first time, you're like, oh shit. What did I do? Now, if you had the spinach dip, you will eventually eat it, and it's gone bad, and you get food poisoning, and you die. And then you'll find out why we put on the wig. As soon as the good ship USS Love Tub slowly sinks behind the horizon, we rejoin our noble hero in his latest predicament. <clears throat> he looks so sad. <coughs> Isn't it funny how time flies when you're having fun? And now we're going through days. Day two. Day three. I hope I didn't forget anything. Day four. Boy, is that sun hot. It's a good thing you use that sunscreen to block those ultraviolets. The sun out here is hot enough to fry an egg. That's why you put on the sunscreen. That's why, you, or you think the sun must be even hotter today. It's a good thing you wore that silly wig. The sun out here is hot enough to fry your brains. And that's why we wear the wig. <clears throat> this becomes more and more intense with every passing day. Visions of pre-classic Coke float before your eyes. 
You extract the grotesque gulp from your inside coat pocket and are surprised to discover it has retained its entire 32 gallon capacity. You now have enough fluid to last you for weeks, but you're worried about your blood sugar levels. Your hunger grows intense with the passing of the days. Visions of Danny's pizza floats before your eyes. You cleverly open the sewing kit you stole from the, that mother's nightstand, extract a safety pin and thread, patiently fish for hours, but eventually catch your limit. Your limit for raw fish is quite low. <clears throat> <coughs> now see this is why we pick up all these different things and this is back when the internet was not good during a particularly rough storm late in your 10th night at sea your life will crashes on a coral reef and shatters to bits grab the largest piece of wood you can hold on tight and survive the storm the dawn finds you crashing through an offshore reef tumbling through the surf of a gorgeous beach hey Larry that's you out there in the surf. Land ho, you cry. We made it. We are on a beach. We have survived the seas. Well, good. Here comes someone to help you. <laughs> Asshole kick. Asshole. Kick sand in my face. Congratulations, Larry. You have survived weeks adrift on the high seas with nothing but your courage, perseverance, and a few humble provisions. During tropical storms, the vicious winds and high seas, and just a tiny love boat prevailed over the surf, offshore barrier reef, and razor sharp coral. Save the dangerous mother, avoided the vicious KGB, and the tempting enticements of the evil Dr. No Nookie's uh, henshed hordes, and withstood that creep's audacious humor. Audacious humor. And you're still good as new. But boy, is your suit a mess. Of course. Don't you just love a good polyester? But now you wonder, where am I? And what possession survived your disastrous journey? Let's take a look, shall we? Inventory. Our money, our passport, and the onglong. Right, let's explore this beach. Oh, crud. I done did messed up. You are quickly taken to a local office of the KGB where a specialist in onklunk extraction is busy giving you the third degree. And so, my little white-suited capitalist swine, says the KGB agent, you will now tell us the location of that onklunk or I will be forced to run these alto saxophone reeds on your fingernails and tell you zinging like the bird. Things all look good, Gary. Larry. Maybe a different approach next time. Right, well... I guess this episode is going to be... ending a little early right now because I have to catch up to when I get back on the beach. Unfortunately. <clears throat> so. Yeah, it's maybe about a minute, minute and a half earlier than the other ones. So, I want to thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.